In this video, we'll discuss how Postman can be used as an API client to send requests, inspect responses, and easily debug. Now, Postman began as a tool that would simplify the API testing process, but has since evolved into a full-fledged API platform. This means that Postman can be used to explore all types of HTTP APIs regardless of the protocol. So you can create and execute any REST, SOAP, and GraphQL queries from within Postman. So let's go ahead and explore making a request. First thing to notice is that here in this workspace, I have this collection called API 101. And this is just a series of requests. Let's go ahead and look at this first request, get all customers. Now let's familiarize ourselves with the Postman UI. We've opened up a new tab here within Postman and this top section here contains all the information relative to our actual request. This part here is the address to which we are going to send um, the request to the server. So this is the server address. This dropdown here is going to be the HTTP verb that tells the server what kind of request we're making to it. So if I click this dropdown, we can see I have all the familiar HTTP verbs, including some other less common ones. So get, post, put, patch, delete, etc. For now, we're gonna go ahead and just stick with get because that's the most simple to work with. Before clicking send, let's go ahead and look at some of the other things available to customize before sending a request. The first thing you'll notice is that we're already in this params section, right? And so all these tabs are various ways in which you can affect or change the request itself. So the first thing to do is enter some query params. Now query, par query params are going to append to the end of the actual request URL. So let's say our key is foo and the value is bar. You'll notice up top in the actual request address, we now have foo and bar um, as a query parameter. I don't actually wanna send this. So to remove it, I can just uncheck it here. And if I wanna remove it from this pane completely, I can just go ahead and find this X all the way on the right and exit out. Cool. We're not gonna look at these other tabs just yet. So let's go ahead and click send. Great. So now that I've clicked send, we can notice that this bottom pane populated with response data. And we're in this body tab here. And what this is going to be is the actual response that we got from the server. So right now it's in pretty mode, but let's click raw. And this will show us exactly what we actually got from the server. But what Postman is able to do is recognize that JSON was returned back to us or, or text that is able to be formatted as JSON and has taken the liberty of doing that for us which makes it much easier for us to read and consume as humans. From here, a few other things worth pointing out are we have our status code, and this is going to tell us exactly what the code was. In this case, it was 200 OK, which is the standard response for successful requests. And Postman will also have a little blurb describing what the code means. Here's the time for how long the request and the response took. And then lastly, we have the size. And this tells us how much, or excuse me, how big the response body was and how big the response headers were. And if we wanted to, we could see more information on the response under the cookies, headers, or test results tab, which we're going to ignore for now, but you can dive in on your own. Now let's look at a slightly more advanced request and look at a post request. From here, you'll notice that we've used an, uh, a variable in our URL. So if I hover over this, we can see that this is a collection variable, which really just replaces the URL in a, in a variable form here for us. And now the HTTP verb is a post, and that means we're going to send information to a server um, in addition to our request. Um, in this case, it already has gone to the body tab for us, and so the body is going to be where we actually attach the information we want to send to the request, in this case, it's raw JSON, so that's what we have selected. And again, it's you know the syntax is highlighted conveniently. So let's go ahead and click send. And we see down here in our response pane, more information on this request. The status code is slightly different because this was a different type of request. And we get the same response body here with all of the information sent back from the server.